Good morning. I welcome you this morning. Uh, as we get started, just a couple of announcements. Um, people are being great about uh, getting their uh, Christmas gifts back for the families from North Hills Community Outreach, the kids. Um, so that's great. You can just put them in the back there. Uh, it's helpful if you would mark off on the uh, list that you've returned um, the gift that for the tag you took. I think we just have a couple left back there. So if you haven't had a chance, um, I think there's some back there still. Uh, still taking scarves. Um, we don't have a lot of new announcements today. Um, but uh, two uh, announcements um, from our prayers. Um, both Harry Regal and Grace Ross passed away um, Thursday, Friday, the end of the week here. Uh, Harry's funeral will be here on Tuesday, and they're doing visitation here um, from 9.30 to 11, and then the service at 11. Um, so you're welcome to come for that. Grace's funeral is at Shell House on Wednesday, and I'm pretty sure that's 11 o'clock too, um, with visitation on Tuesday, 2 to 4, 6 to 8. So. Um, if you'll keep those families in your prayers, much appreciated. Um, the, I think the last announcement I have is um, had a, an opportunity to go to St. John Highland Lutheran Church last night and see their musical. Um, they did Beauty and the Beast, and Emily Hartle from here was in it, and she's been talking about it for, for a while. Uh, it was fantastic, and um, just uh, if... If you ever get to go to one of their musicals, wow, do they do an amazing job. But it was fun to see Emily up there singing and dancing and having a good time. So just wanted to congratulate her and, and the whole cast. Um, anything else for us today? All right, let's take, um, uh, no, let's share the peace. Peace of the Lord be with you. Please stand and join in our opening hymn.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. 
Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all that peoples. Give us all that inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite our young people to come forward. be right back. Okay. So, what am I holding? A candle. Uh-huh. And what does a candle do? It burns. And when it burns, what does it give? Wax. Wax. And fire. And fire. And one more thing. If we were in a dark room, if the sun wasn't shining, what would... Yes. Light. Light. Yes. Light. So you get light. You get a little bit of heat from the fire. Yep. So... The uh, reading from the Bible today says we're to walk as children of light, right? So we, last week we talked about carrying inside of us the light of Christ and the love of Christ. Um, so today we want to talk about what that means. So you have the light of Christ inside of you, in your heart, right? Um, can you share that with other people? Yeah, yeah. What happens if you run out? What happens if you give all your light away? Was that possible? No. No. Why? Because people are always nice. Because people are always nice. Right. So I wanted to show you something. So this light, I'm going to share this light, okay, and see what happens to it. All right? So... Do I have less light now? No. No. It's, I have the same amount, don't I? Even though I shared it, right? Let's try it again, see if it still works. Do I have less light now? Yes. Do I? Well, it's a little bit lower, but I still have light, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm not running out, right? Let's see, let's try this one. So I want you to think about three words while I do this, okay? I want you to think about love and faith. Hmm? Well, kindness is a good word, but I want three words today that I want you to remember, so, uh, if I can remember them, right? Um, so I want you to think about love and faith and hope, okay? Those three words. And we'll see if you remember those at the end. Love, faith, hope. Okay, so let's see. So I have a candle, and this is, this is Christ in me. And I share that light from the candle, and it doesn't go away. And I share it again, and it doesn't go away. And I share it again, and it doesn't go away. Hmm. Let's try it again. Same thing, right? Just keeps burning, right? Let's try it one more time. Hmm. So the nature of light is that it, it, it can't wear out. You can't give it away so much that it goes away, especially when we talk about the light of Christ. I'm going to blow this one out so it doesn't drip wax on me. Um, the same thing is true for our three words. So what were my three words today? Anybody remember? Not truth, but that's a good one. <laughs> Love. Hope. Hope. 
And the other one is, starts with a, the letter F. Say, remember, faith. Sure. Right, love, faith, and hope. These are things that the light of Christ gives us and that we can give away to no end, right? We can love and love and love and love and love and we'll never run out of love, right? Because it's God's love. And we can give away faith, which means how we believe in God. We can give that away. We can give other people faith and say, hey, believe in God with me, right? That'll never go away. We never run out of faith. And the last one is hope. And hope is um, when, you know, when, when, uh, when things get difficult, our hope is in God. Our hope is that God loves us and takes care of us and will make things right. And so we have hope. And we can give that hope to other people and never run out of our hope, right? Just like the candle just keeps sharing the light, we keep sharing what three things? What's our three words? We share, remember, first one starts with L, love, love. and we share, starts with an F, faith, faith. Yeah. and hope. All right, Sam, Sam with me, ready? Love, faith, hope, right? Say it again, love, faith, hope. One more time, love, faith, hope. And we're going to share those, right, with everybody, because those are all inside of us with the light of Christ. Okay? All right. Go and share. Thanks. Good morning. The first reading is from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will do no good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty embattlements. I will bring such distress upon the people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a fool a terrible end he will make for all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, 
encourage one another and build each other up as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to one, the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. The vice president of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, um, Imran Siddiqui shared uh, his recent report to the National Church Council. He said, one of the things I spoke about was cynicism and hope in the church. It is incredibly easy to be cynical. It is easy to believe that nothing will change or be different. And then he says, it's harder to have hope. Hope that what we do actually matters. Isn't that true? It's hard some days to think that we can have an impact on the struggles of the church or on the struggles of the world. The latest statistics on war around the world show that between 30 and 50 wars are going on at any given point in time. And we only hear about one or two of those in in our news. There are wars which involve two or more countries, and there's civil wars, armed conflicts, terrorism, ethnic violence, and drug wars. Of course, we know about Israel and Hamas or or Palestine, and, and we know about Russia and Ukraine. But what about ongoing conflicts in Afghanistan, Ethiopia, 
Iraq, Yemen, Syria, Somalia, Libya, the Central African Republic, Republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Myanmar, Colombia, Mali, and the drug war in Mexico. I don't know if this list is, is inclusive, but even this is overwhelming. What can we do? 300, oh no, sorry, 35,275 people have been shot to death in the, in the United States since January. What can we do? 12% of the population in the US struggles with hunger. That's 41 million people. 38 million Americans struggle with poverty. 16.7% of children do not know where their next meal is coming from. The average monthly income for those who use food assistance programs is $800 a month. So what do we do? Now I know that we are good people who take seriously God's call to help. We, we know that we're called to be peacemakers, to feed the hungry, to set the oppressed free. So I'm sure many of you are thinking about the letters and emails you have sent to legislators, how many bags of food you have donated, the Christmas gifts you are buying for North Hills Community Outreach, the families you have helped. Many of you and your family members have served in the military in some way. And we as a church do so much. And then we encourage one another to do even more. We pray. We send money, we plead with God. It's not that we don't try, but the question today is, what impact are we having and do we have hope for the church and for the world? It's harder to have hope, hope that what we do actually matters. Now, I think I mentioned last Sunday, and I'm sure you all remember, that, that much of what Jesus is doing and saying in this, these final chapters of Matthew, right before his arrest and crucifixion, is much of what he's telling people in these parables is, is ramping up their anxiety and, and pressing the urgency of the time. The end is coming. And we have to do more than just wait for it and watch it happen. That's his message, parable after parable after parable. The 13th Assembly of the Lutheran World Federation met in September under the theme of one body, one spirit, one hope. One hope that God is faithful, that God will complete what God has begun. The study guide for that event says that hope is, therefore, the confident expectation and active waiting for God's purposes to be fulfilled and the capacity to strive for what must be altered, amended, and rectified to realize that promise on earth. Confident expectation, active waiting for God's purposes to be fulfilled and the capacity to strive for what must be altered, amended, and rectified to realize that promise on earth. This sort of hope sometimes makes people think that you're being naively optimistic. They may scoff and say, well, you can't believe that. You can't believe that having a vision for the church or a, a mission statement makes a difference. Well, why not? Why can't I believe that these things can be better? In fact, I do choose to believe that what we do matters. I choose to believe that our collections and shelter meals and prayers make a difference. That being in this community and showing up in the hospital waiting room makes a difference. 
that your work calls to those who grieve make a difference. I choose to believe that our stewardship program that will be launched in January will lead our church in gratitude and generosity in a way that will make meaningful, timely changes to our people and our work and our ministry. I choose to believe that we will achieve our goals of helping to form people's faith and make serving the world feasible for all and sustaining excellence in our ministry. In a year where we have been challenged to rethink what we do here and how we keep it going, I challenge us to choose to be hopeful as well. I challenge us to be naively optimistic that these things and more can be done if we trust God, if we trust each other, and if we work as hard as we can to do the things that make a difference, if even for one person. Join me in being naively optimistic that our hopes and dreams can and will succeed. Let us not despair, but be confident that our work helps in God's fulfilling of God's promises to us. May we naively opt, be naively optimistic that our work in service of our God, in our communities and in this congregation matters and has a positive impact on the world. May we be naively optimistic that our actions can change our communities. May we be naively optimistic that our message of love and hope and grace can change the world into a more loving, kind, and godly place. Amen.
Living together as one body in Christ, we confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, you give talents and gifts to all your people, and you equip the church to serve. Turn us from fear and self-serving ways that we may use our talents to glorify you and encourage our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. You have been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Sustain the life of the planet. Protect farmlands, oceans, and harvests. Direct all people in wise stewardship of all the earth's resources. Hear us, O oh God. You teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Where there is sickness or sorrow, bring healing. And when there is loneliness, reveal your love and community. We remember before you this congregation and all of its members. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for the faith formation ministries of our church. As we heard today in 1 Thessalonians, give us all our children, youth, and adults, who study your word, the breastplate of faith and love. Shape us by your love and show us how to encourage one another. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, we count our many blessings as we celebrate Thanksgiving this week. Protect those who travel with your safety. Bless those who are lonely or hurting during the holiday season. We give thanks for the donations of food for the Hub and North Hills Community Outreach in the gifts in the Children's Wishes Program. Hear us, O Lord. Gracious God, you're faithful in all generations. For the promise of life and rest and for the witness of those who have died in faith, we praise your goodness. Hear us, O God. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.
Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people, in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Please be seated for just a moment. For those who are receiving Holy Communion at home today, please take your bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. And now your cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The table is ready. Please come and receive.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received this sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. <laughs>